Okay, everybody, let me know if you can hear me. We're getting ready. We are going to start. Um, just say you can hear me, and we know this when it's time to kick off. Loud and clear. All right, let's just do the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. And hello everybody, welcome to Live from Lockdown, episode number 67. So wonderful to see all of you here, lots of regulars. Um, regulars do a shout out there, say hi, I'm a regular. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. For those of you, I see there's a couple of you who have been trying to make it to Live from Lockdown and it's hard because of scheduling and maybe you're here for the first time, um, let everybody know. Say hi in the chat, everybody's friendly there. And you'll notice that the Bruce is loose. So Bruce Bicknell there is in the chat. He is our moderator. So on um, top of all his other duties, such as kicking people out and stuff like that, he's also ready to take your drink order. So get your drink orders in. If they don't arrive, it's because Bruce drinks them all himself, which is why um, he falls asleep halfway through. Or maybe he doesn't. Who knows? Maybe I'll quiz him. All right, guys. So I hope you're ready for this week. What we're going to be doing is some Photoshop tips. I actually just thought of something right now. I wasn't planning on showing you, but I might as well show you this. How many of you, and this is not a promotion, but how many of you are aware of the Photoshop user magazine? It's not a printed magazine anymore, but it was for many years. Wow, this is an old one. <laughs> um, but for many years, I wrote the, um, it's not that one, but I wrote the tips column in there. So um, for about 15 years, I've been writing a couple of pages of tips. And of course, now it's online publication. And so I still do. So I have a couple of tips up my sleeve, um, short sleeves, so short tips, I guess. And uh, so why don't we just kick off? Let's go. Oh, thanks, Russ. Russ says the tips column was great. And uh, let's see what we've got. All right, so here's a good one to start with. Um, we're just going to take our time here. And, of course, if you've got any questions, just drop them there in the chat. And one of the many things that Bruce does while juggling 12 cups, 6 sources, 3 glasses, and plays 9 guitars at the same time, is he also lets me aware of any of the uh, comments that I might have missed. So if you've got a question about the tip or whatever, you want to... Want me to experiment, try something? Yeah, just drop it in there and let me know. All right, so what we want to do is create a, a sketch. Now, I've shown you a method of creating a sketch. I have a completely new method because it's kind of fun. It lets you create a vector. Now, the difference between a vector and a raster is a pixel. So if we double click and on the magnifying glass, it'll take us all the way in, keep zooming we can see we've got pixels. In fact, this is not a tip, but I guess now it's a bonus tip. If you go under view and you go under the extras here, I believe. Um, let me just zoom all the way in. Let's keep going. There we go. See all those pixels there are showing. And then we go under the view. There's a little thing that shows under show here. Is it layer? It's up there somewhere. Yeah, it's not even a tip. That's why. I there we go. Let's hold that in there. Um, and essentially what it can do is it can show you the preview of the um, of the individual pixels. But we can see the pixels here. That's good enough. So see the little blocks there? Those are individual pixels. So that means if I take something and I try to scale it up humongously, it starts to get soft and blocky. And you're probably familiar with that. Whereas a vector does not. Let me give you an example of a vector. Let me create a new layer. Um, we'll grab a shape tool here. And under the custom shape tool, uh, you know, this is not what we're going to do, but I just want to show you. So just grab a shape. Let's do a check mark. That's exciting. Oh, why don't we do something more detailed? Might be better. There we go. A leafy tree. How's that? More detailed, much better. Right. So the thing is, if you zoom in on this, well, right now it's pixel based. So as we zoom, notice you're going to start to see the blockiness. However, because this is a vector shape, if I scale it, so now I'm not changing the pixels we're looking at, which is the image or the thing. This is a vector. I'm going to scale this up. In fact, why don't we zoom way out here so I can make this just humongously huge. Okay, so we're going to go like way huge 
and hit enter. Now, if that was pixels, that would look really, really bad at this point when we zoom in. And we zoom in here and look at that. There's no jaggy edges. I mean, there's a jaggy creation. But as you can see here, the edges are nice and crisp. They don't get soft or blocky uh, because it's a vector. So a vector is infinite scalable. Um, you can go as big or as small as you want without ruining the quality. Or, you know, it just looks crisp all the time, which is why you should use it for things like logos. All right, awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the sketch. Let me show you the traditional sketch, how to create a pencil sketch, and then I'm going to show you um, how to do it as a vector. So let me just hit Control J, double. What that does is just duplicates the layer. And I just want to make it black and white. Command Shift U. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this is a different method and it's more of a tutorial, but Control J will copy that. So what have we got right now? We've got two black and white layers, identical. The top one, we want to invert it. Control or Command I. So this is what we have right now. Two black and white layers. Don't worry about the layer underneath. It's just preserved for, you know, we, we don't need that for this. So we've got a black and white layer and a black and white that is inverted over the top of it. Change this to linear light mode. Um, well, linear dodge will work. Linear dodge should work. All right, so we're just going to choose a filter blur. And then we're going to do a Gaussian blur. There we go. And then we can do the blur, and it's going to give us this, you know, kind of outline effect that looks like a pencil sketch. You have seen me do this before, some of you. If it's new, let me know. Um, but I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so that way we're familiar with. Well, maybe we are, maybe we're not, but now we all are. All right, let me show you something that's new and exciting. Well, Newish. Um, new to you, maybe. Let me know if it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our library. So you'll see the libraries there. And so if you choose the uh, window, under window, you're going to see libraries. Now I'm digging around a little bit in the menu. You might be wondering, wait, why is it taking, a, you know, like normally, you know, it's muscle memory. So I actually have a new monitor and uh, it's a beautiful monitor. I love it. It's a Bing Q32 inch monitor, photographer monitor. It's 4K. Um, I've got it running in 1080 right now, but I'm yeah, just getting used to it. I don't have it on camera. Next week I'll show you guys, but I love this monitor and um, I'll do a review on it soon. So just letting you know. All right. So what I want to do with the libraries available. Um, and what monitor are you guys all using? Let me know in the chat there. All right. So what we're doing is with the layer, it's just a flattened image. And if you go into the libraries, you can see this little plus. And under this plus, you see this little create from image. Now this actually comes from Adobe Capture. It's in Photoshop now, so it works as a Photoshop tip. So we're gonna choose create from image. And what's gonna happen is this window is gonna open. We can do all kinds of things. We can do all kinds of crazy things with patterns and shapes and you know kaleidoscopic things. Um, you know, you can you can get crazy with this. This is not the tip, but Definitely, it's fun and you can, you know, move it around, you know, do all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, can it animate? It's probably something someone's going to ask. Well, just do a screen capture. Um, all right. So what I want to show you, though, is shapes. And if we look at the shapes here, we can do detail. And we can say, hey, you know what? Let's do this really blocky or, you know, like a stamp and decide how sharp or how much detail you want. Now, you have the option to invert it goes the other way. I happen to prefer it better this way. And we can smooth it on save. So let's do that. Smoothing is just, you know, it looks a little rough, a little blocky because this is just a preview. And we can go and we can fix it. Now, let me just show you a little tip for those of you who know this and maybe don't know everything about it. If you go like really crazy, you can grab this little eraser tool and you can erase bits that you don't want to include. But let's undo it. I'm not going to do that, but now you know. Great. So let's hit the X key. And what can I do here? Can I get back now that I've erased it? I probably have to reset it. Okay, let me just close this and we're going to go back in again. But I did want to show you that option. So back in again, we're going to do shapes. And there we go, back where we were. Let's get our detail where we want. 
Now, what we're going to do is it's not going to open in the image directly. What we're going to do is save it to CC libraries. CC is Creative Cloud, in case you didn't know. CC is also something used in After Effects. Interesting. OK, so there's a shape that I saved and there's other ones that I've been experimenting with. OK, so what does this mean? Well, what this means is um, let me just fill this with just a solid color so we can um, see what's happening. OK, so I've just got a new layer. I've just filled it and this just makes it easy to see what's going on. If I drag this into the screen, this is now a vector. If I hold the shift key, it'll constrain it. And this is cool. So, you know, we can do all kinds of like, you know, fun things with overlays and different things like that using this. But what makes this exciting? As I said, it's a vector. Watch this. Control T. Let's zoom way the heck out. And I'm going to just hold down the shift key and the option key to do it from the center. I'm just going to make this humongous. So right now, this is pretty humongous. So Kathy has a Samsung 4K 27-inch, $200 from Costco several years ago. She almost bought an LG for $200 last week. Yep, the prices keep coming down. All right, let's wait for this to render. Now, is this new to you guys? Let me know. And if you're getting any pleasure and joy out of this, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. That's a like button. And if I do anything that's new or you haven't seen before, also hit that like button. How are we doing for likes? We've got 36 likes and, oh, over 162 people. So we definitely need more likes here, Guru. Uh, David's got a Ben Q, 27 inch. Nice, good choice. Um, all right, so here is our image. And, well, let's just show the edge. And I'm just going to zoom all the way in. In fact, double click the magnifying glass. We'll take it to 100%. And look at this. Look how beautiful and smooth that is. Absolutely smooth as a baby's nose. All right. So this brings us to another tip. What if I want to scale this? If I hit Control T or Command T for free transform, and I want to scale something, normally you have those, you know, those little handles that you can grab. I can't see those handles because obviously the image is way, way bigger than the canvas. So here's a tip. Control zero or command zero will zoom out so you can see the transform handles. And then we can resize this again. And I'm just going to pop it over here and hit enter. And just let her go. Francis has a iMac 27 inch. Oh, nice. Very nice. OK, and there's our image. Once again, double click. We can see it's nice and smooth. And that's what the smoothing does. The smoothing just, you know, any weird lines, it just kind of smooths those out. All right, so that's essentially what we did there by capturing that vector. Now, here's some other ones that I did just to show you. Just wanted to see how it would look. You could do a woodcut kind of effect with a truck. Just a photo, you know, photo of a truck, obviously. Um, we'll go to street. These are just different ones I was just experimenting with to see how they would work. And yeah, you guys can do these from your photos. Now, here's the thing. If you right click and you want to edit these, yeah, you can't edit the vectors inside of Photoshop. These are library linked. So if you go in here and you grab this, notice it's not doing anything. These are our selection tools, our path selection, direct selection. So you can't edit them there. So what do you do if you want to edit these? Well, you can edit them. All you need to do is open them in Illustrator. And in an Illustrator, uh, this library is actually shared with Illustrator. So you'll see that you can actually go and grab the individual pixels, not the pixels, but the individual points, the vectors, the paths. You can change them. You can move them. And then uh, when you're done, you can just save them back to the library and then open them here inside of Photoshop. Now, these can also be kind of fun if I choose things like, um, you know, a photograph and then you drag some of these onto the photo. They can look kind of fun. Let me show you. You know, so you could do things like this and just create some fun, cool effects. So that's using that vector shape. Now, if you wanted to change the color of this, you can definitely do that. You're just going to use adjustment layers. So what we're going to do is just go up under the adjustment and let's change it to a solid color. Let's give it a nice brownish color. 
Now, I just want it to affect the shape only, not the whole thing. Go between the two layers and hold down the Alt or the Option key and click. And what that does is it just clips that, see there, just to the layer underneath so it doesn't affect the whole image. So now that you've got that clip there, I can change this to you know a different color, make it darker, you know, grab a different tone, and literally just go in here now and just recolor it. And the nice thing about it, it's completely non-destructive, so I can recolor it and I can change my mind at any time. In fact, if I want to put a gradient in here, let's go into the window, grab a gradient panel, and you know we can literally just drag, just drag a gradient in there. And we can just hide that and you know there's our gradient don't like that color grab another one and literally just go through and change it so those are kind of fun lots of nice and fun and exciting things that we can do with that shape all right tip tip hooray moving on to the next tip let me do a quick one and for those of you joining us what are we doing today we're doing tips inside of Photoshop okay let me show you um, a uh, let me have a look here. Someone's saying right click edit content. Yeah, that's not going to work on this particular one because this, see that little cloud there? That means it's a, um, well, hang on. Let's see if we hit here, it might work. No, definitely not. No, because it's a library link smart object. And the way this works is generally speaking, if you had a smart object, you could right click or even double click and it would open it inside of a new window and you could edit that, which was uh, Don. But when you do this capture here, when you're capturing this, the only way you can edit this one directly is in Illustrator. So a uh, regular smart object, yes. And see that little cloud means it's library linked. All right, so quick tip, quick tip. All right, so for those of you just joining us, we're doing tips in Photoshop. Here's an oldie and a goodie. Let me just go to the full screen here on my desktop. And what I want to do is I want to show you the screen modes. This is one of those things I just assume everybody knows, but you know, kind of like the toolbar, not everybody does know. Single column toolbar used to always be double, but the little arrows at the top, if you tap on there, yes, it becomes a double column toolbar. Click on that again. And it's not. And of course, you know, you can make it floating, just drag it out, hit that double thing and you get the floating toolbar like we always had in Photoshop. Just drag to the side, snap to the blue, hit the arrow, goes back. How many people didn't know that? That that was, you know, if you knew it in Photoshop, you might not know that. Um, so here's another one of those kind of things. Hey, Jerry, good to see you. All right, so screen modes. Right now we're looking at Photoshop with the interface. And if we hit the F key, what it did is it went into different modes. Each time I tap that F key, see how we've got Photoshop, we've got the full menu, everything at the top. Tap it one more time, notice the status bar disappears, we've got a little bit more screen real estate. And oh, by the way, the rulers, Control R, we'll get rid of those rulers, Control 0 or Control 1, we'll fill the screen, Control 1, Command 1, Control Mac, Command. And F one more time, gives us full screen, nice. So what's the, uh, this is what we call preview mode, but the thing is, if I hit the tab key, I can bring back the panels while I'm in there. So tab will toggle on and off the panels. Or if I hit shift tab, it just brings back just the panels there. Shift tab will do that and not necessarily the toolbar and everything else. So tab toggles those. F key goes through the three different modes. F key again, normal, watch again. Once again, hit the tab, hides it, but notice you can now see the tabs and everything in there. So this is regular mode with the tab or shift tab. Shift tab will just show and hide our panels. So once again, F key, second mode, shift tab shows hides the panels, tab show hide everything, F one more time. This time this shift tab will just show the panels only and the tab of course shows everything else. All right, so there we go. That's uh, maybe useful for you guys for those um, screen modes. That's just a nice quick one that just kind of makes it easier. Oh, by the way, while you're in here. Um, so here's another one. When we're in here and we're zoomed all the way in, well, Command 1, Control 1 will get you all the way in. By the way, that's 100% preview. Control 0 shows everything. Okay, so 100%. 
What if you want to move around the screen? If you hit the space bar, you can drag around and go through different parts of the document. Let me zoom in. Once again, space bar, you can just move around. Now, hey Rod, good to see you. Now, let me show you another one. If you want to kind of go around it, there's some panels here. A lot of these panels I don't use. Like, let me show you, for example, um, let me just hit the F so we can get back here. You'll notice I work in a very minimum, minimum space and that's because I can replace pretty much everything with keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. So let me show you another one that we can replace, Navigator Panel. How many of you guys use it? Navigator. What makes Navigator great? Well, Navigator is cool because we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can double click on there to go to different aspect ratios, tap each time. Now we go by 100%, see that? Or we can double click here and that will take us to 100. Double click will take us to 50 and keep going. So you can tap or you can zoom. If you tap on here, it gives you, you precise um, measurements. Now, one of the things about this is when we zoom in with the navigator panel, you get this little box and you can move it around. In fact, let's use something else that looks something more interesting looking. Here we go. Let's zoom into this photo. Okay, so now we can zoom in. We want to go to the face. We just move it there. There's the face. Just kind of pull it out a little bit, right? Show the taxi. This is a navigator panel. How many of you use it? Dojo didn't know about the navigator. Well, it doesn't matter. You don't need it. Let me show you how to replace it now that I've sold you on it. When you're in here, if you hit the H key for the hand and then click and hold, what am I doing wrong here? Let me make sure I'm in there. Let me grab my view. Am I doing it? Did I turn something off? Okay, so this is weird. Okay, let me go back to my normal view here. Hang on a sec one, guys. One second here. Okay. And um do, 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 do. what am I doing? Don't you love it when you forget the keyboard shortcut? Or maybe I didn't forget it. Maybe I'm... Uh, it's... Okay, so generally speaking, if, if you hit and hold the H key, I know what it is. I've changed some preferences under here. Um, might not work unless I restart. But let's have a look. Yeah, I probably have to restart. Okay, so I'll just tell it to you. If you hold down the H key and then you click, this will zoom out. And then you can reposition it and you can do the same thing as using the navigator. Um, I disabled native canvas, so I can't show you that. That's why. Okay, but that'll do it for you. All right. Next thing I want to show you guys is another thing that's fun. Hey, Larry. Good to see you. Um, let's do a new image. And let me show you something fun with sliders. So I've shown you guys how to do things here with the display. Oh, by the way, as far as workspace, I have stuff super minimum. I use the colon minimum workspace. And if you look on here, all I have for my workspace is toolbar on the left, layers, channels and paths. I could probably get rid of paths because I don't use it that often. And in properties. Now, the properties are useful because when you're on a bottom layer, there's these new um, buttons here, these smart buttons enable you to do different things. See that, you know, when you're on a layer, let's go. There's a lot of layers on there. Let me just go to flattened image. Let me just grab an image here and I'll show you something. Just choose edit. And that pops open. And this option here enables you to do different things. Okay, I there we go. That was weird that that was gray for a while. So when you're working on these, you get all these quick actions. So, you know, I can change the image size. This is, check this out. If I click on image size, I can go in there. I can change it. I can trim this. I can crop it. You know, I can rotate it. Like all of these things can be accessed here from the quick panel here. 
So you don't necessarily have to go through and uh, go through the menu for these different things. Now, quick actions are super useful, but unfortunately, we don't have the ability to create our own. That would be a nice option. But there's other things that we can do, such as, you know, let's just do file new. Let's create a new document. Um, we can change the fill color, which is the background color. So if you're inside a new image and you're about to build it and you'd rather have black or you'd rather have gray or white, notice as I choose that, it chooses black and white. You can choose those or you can grab the custom color, which I was doing, you know, any color you want back to white. You can change it there. You can change the mode. So instead of going up under image mode and choosing RGB 8-bit, you can just do it from here. We can also change the canvas size, watch this. Proceed, boom. So, you know, if I want to make this 4,000 uh, PX tab, how many knew about this? And then we can just type it in literally in there and now we can get a 4,000 by 4,000 document. So you can change those sizes in here. Now you can change the landscape portrait, but it's not gonna do anything because right now it's square. So let's go to the 2000, proceed. You could turn on don't show again, landscape portrait. Oh yeah, let's do that, boom, that quick. And if I turn don't show again on, like we can just do it instantly, look, yeah. So you have these kind of options. These are super useful. Um, oh, there's a question there. If you click an empty space next to the panels tab, okay, let me let me read this slowly. If you click, uh, David, I've seen other people use a navigator panel to show themselves whilst doing videos. They somehow insert their own camera image. Oh, that's yeah, that you've seen, uh, yeah. All, all they're doing. Let me let me show you all they do for that, um, David. Is when they're doing YouTube videos and they want to show their face. <laughs> it's actually. They're, they're not that clever. I, I've done it. Um, not, not dissing them. I mean, it, it's actually a clever idea because all they're essentially doing is just opening up a panel that they're not going to use uh, like this. And then they just pop it in, say there, and say, okay, well, let's get it at the very top. Uh, I know Aaron Nace was actually the very first person to do this. Um, and all you're doing is it's just it's not going to rescale. So when you're working in other panels, that's going to stay there. And essentially, um, that navigator panel is there, but you pop it on the bottom. Because if I go here, it's going to maybe make it bigger or smaller when I change the size of other ones. Or not. And then all he does when he edits the video is he just actually just takes the video from the camera and just embeds it over the top in post-production. So that's how people do that. All right. Ah, so there we go. David, that's what they do there. It's no actual magical video appearing in there. Um, if you click an empty space next to the panels tab and press minimize, you collapse them and create more space. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, you can definitely do that. Yeah, you can change the sizes of these in here. There's actually three different options. You can have icon mode. You can actually drag it out and it shows icon with the name. Or you can click on here and it will pop it open. You can also uh, right click and you can change these options. So you can choose interface options here and you can choose to auto collapse them or different things like that. So auto collapse means I go in here, I use something, I go in there, now it disappears. If I right click and I can actually just turn it off here and I pop it open and then I work, it stays open. So that's kind of a nice way of working with those panels. Anyway, now let's get to something else that I wanted to show you guys. And let me use this image here. So I'm just gonna right click and open in Photoshop. So you're gonna suddenly see a photo magically appear. And the reason for that is I just had Bridge running on another screen. All right, Shadow Highlight. Here's a really interesting thing about using Shadow Highlight. Now the tip is not really about Shadow Highlight. Let me reset this but you're going to in enjoy this anyway. So when we're working with shadow highlight, you'll notice as adjustment layers, it's not there because it's not available as an adjustment layer. You can go under image adjustments and I've shown you guys this before. We've got shadow highlight. This isn't the tip, but here's an additional tip. What you're not going to see in here is shadow highlight and HDR toning. Those are not going to appear under there. But if you want to use them like an adjustment layer, just right click, convert this to a smart object. Then when we've got the smart object, if we go, once again, I've got a better tip coming for you, but if we go under image adjustments, 
shadow highlights it pops in now we have the turn that off let's just go to the basic option shadow highlight right there and now it appears because it's a smart object that means if i want to change anything i can double click brings up blending options i can change the opacity or the mode of what i'm working on or i can double click the name of the filter and it brings up the setting just like if i was working in an adjustment layer but i'm not i'm working on a smart object so when you want to use this one or HDR toning, create the smart object, then you're going to have these options re-editable. But let's see what we're doing. If you choose more options, so the top here is shadows. This opens up the shadow areas. Well, duh. Um, the tone actually determines if we just work in the shadows. And now we start to go more into the midtones. You want to do midtones as well. So that chooses the range. The further left you go, just the darker shadows as you move it to the right it starts to encompass more of the image same thing with the highlights if you've got highlights that are blown out you can adjust the amount that will bring those back and if you want to just hit the brightest highlights move the tone to the left if you also want to include mid tones move it to the right so you can kind of dial in what tones you want to affect and then how much you want to restore them so this is a nice way to bring a little bit more dynamic range into a regular photo. This is not HDR, it's not in any way HDR, but what it's doing is it's um, revealing details in the shadows and the highlights of the image that we're working in. Okay, all of that to show you, it has two other options by the way, color, which is saturation. If I set that to zero, it just neutralizes it. Because sometimes when you open up the details in the shadows, see how they can look a little desaturated? So sometimes boosting those colors a little bit can bring that color back into those shadows. But you want to be gentle with that. Um, yeah, because you'll lose the saturation there in the dark highlights. And in tone is just a, you know, just a contrast slider. So let me just set that to zero. Okay, this is what I want to show you. The black clip, white clip. This is something that people don't do. So there's no actual blacks in this image right now. And sometimes it can look washed out and lacking contrast. Like maybe some of these areas here that actually have black, like a Sharpie or, or this should have a little black in there. So what I can do is I can pull those blacks in by sliding across. And see what it's doing. When we hit a certain point, it forces these to black. And, uh, you know, if you look at that black with 0.56 versus zero, look at this. Doesn't that look better? 0.56 looks better now same thing with the whites if we want to clip those whites pardon me so you, you don't have any pure whites everything's looking milky you want to have some snap and punch in your image we can increase it okay here's a tip i want to show you notice i'm not in here but i'm dragging on the name scrubby sliders you might be aware of those you can do it on the name if you hold control or command key every dialog box becomes a scrubby slider so that means if you have a box in one of the filters, which is many of them in Photoshop that doesn't have a name, you don't have to type in the field ever again. Control command becomes scrubby. Gets better. What if you want to get very precise? So I'm just going to drag on the name, but you can do it here. Control command, and then you could add the out or option key. So that would be command option or just go on the name and hold the option key. Notice now it moves at one degree increment. So this gives you ultra precision. So when you're really close and you just want to do it one little point at a time, notice the settings are very, very small, minimum. Alt option key will slow it down to one tenth of the speed. We'll give you precision mode. But what about, you know, if you really want to get there quickly, hold down the shift key will accelerate this turbo mode by 10% at a time. So we're moving 10 times faster and notice we can really just power through this. So that's the scrubby slider. So, you know, sometimes I would go in here and notice I'm nowhere near the black clipping. I just keep moving all the way across. So sometimes I'll hold down the shift key, get turbo mode, get in the vicinity of where I want to go, then hit the alt or the option key and just dial it in one at a time. And that works on every single thing inside of Photoshop. Um, easy. Uh, quick mask is that a question no question are adjustments in the shadow highlight panel destructive um well yes they are but not if we're doing them as a smart object 
If I was to apply this directly to the photograph, yes. Any of these adjustments, if I choose image adjustment and I get through this menu, all of these are destructive. Unless I create a smart object and use them as a smart filter, which if I want to do levels, now that I've got a smart object, watch this. Let me hit control M for curves. Now curves appears in here and I can double click and there's my curves again. And now this is working like an adjustment layer, but it has an advantage in using this over an adjustment layer. What is the advantage? Keyboard shortcut. I can apply this with control M. I can't do an adjustment layer. If I want levels, control L. There's levels. Let's do the mid tones. Click OK and look at this. They're available. I can hide any of these just by clicking on them. Or if I double click on the curves, uh, let's not double click on it. Yes, that worked. Okay, double click and then we get the blending options. Now I can take that curve and I can adjust the opacity of all of those curves that I've applied. Now this is working just on that one adjustment, just the curve. So I can adjustment, I can adjust, I can change the blending mode. You know, if I want to go to screen mode and notice what that's doing there, it's just giving me a completely different adjustment. So you, you have the ability to do all these kinds of things working with these smart filters. Now, if you use an adjustment layer, which is under the little yin yang, we can also apply a curve. And here we go, we can apply this curve. Now, what is the difference between using this curve and the smart curve? The curves work identical. Just they're actually quite easy here if I'm working on a smart object. If you've already got a smart object and you're applying filters or you want to use shadow highlight or HDR toning, which don't appear as adjustment layers, these work great. Now, if I wanted to change, as I showed you, double click on here. Um, I want to change the blend mode back to normal. I can change the blend mode or opacity here. Let me click here. This hides these. If I'm working with the curves adjustment, I can do the same thing. I can change the blend mode here. Screen will make it lighter and adjust the opacity. So this will work the same, but we can just stack them up here when we work on the smart filter. The other thing is the smart filters only have one mask. So let me turn these on. So if we've got the mask there and I grab a black brush and I don't want to apply it everywhere, I will grab the um, mask, grab a black brush, and I can paint it away from the areas I don't want to apply it. Now the disadvantage of this is there's only one mask for the whole smart object, for the whole stack. Whereas if I'm working with adjustment layers, I have individual masks for every single adjustment. So if I go in here and I use a levels adjustment, we can brighten up those midtones, grab the mask and paint it away from the areas we don't want it. So that's the uh, difference between using these adjustment layers and smart objects. Okay, so there's a little bit of a difference between the two. Um, essentially, they work the same. There's advantages, pros and cons, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do masking, create them as different layers, um, or if you just want to quickly drop them on top, do that. If you've already got a smart object, then you can use keyboard shortcuts and you can apply them if you don't need to mask them. Uh, so now yeah, we went a little bit deeper into that than I was planning, but I think we're cool with that. Okay, let's look at something else. So when we're working on two objects, let me get rid of this. We don't need it. A couple of layers. Okay, so here's a layer there, uh, different documents. Let me get rid of this. I'm just closing these out. Let's have a couple of these going. Okay, so when I want to combine maybe two of these together, if I drag this, drop it into the tab, and then release, it's going to apply here. But notice that this is way bigger. So what if I want to show, I want to expand the canvas to the size of that. So maybe we're compositing and I want to expand it to the size of that layer. Control T, Control Z shows you. So I want to expand it to there. So there's a couple of options. I could choose image size. I could grab the crop tool 
and let me just hit clear and by the way I did a tutorial on Tuesday on the crop tool so check that out on the YouTube I could start to expand it and um, I could do it that way but if I just want to go to the whole bounce and I don't want to have to think about that just choose image and um, we're just gonna choose reveal all and it's gonna crop it to that size notice obviously that's how big the original photo was so this is obviously a larger photo but look at that it enlarged the canvas to encompass the whole photo well that's nice let's do the alt or the other side of that you know like sometimes you do a screen capture or whatever or you've got an image here and you've got all this transparency around it and I want to crop it down so once again you know you can grab the crop tool this works with things like logos and different things like that too and you go to the web and you want to get it cropped as tightly as possible don't do that choose edit and then we go down to uh, did I say edit I mean image trim and if we choose trim we can do it based on different things but let's choose transparent pixels now if I only wanted to do the top left I could turn that and it would crop down to the top left but let's trim the whole thing here we go nice now, if we wanted to just do part of it, let's do the uh, image trim. I always crop it down, so this is something I've never done before. So let's do transparent pixels again. And let's trim away the top and bottom. So we're going to keep the left and the right, maybe. Actually, that's going to trim away the left and the right. Let's trim away top and bottom. Give ourselves some bars. Click OK. Boom. And now we've got it. We've got the transparency there. So we can trim these. Let's just trim the whole thing down. And I'm just going to, I always just do it this way. But I can see the reason for doing this for banners, headers, different things like that. And we're just going to trim it down to there. So that's another one. So if this is new to you guys or you're getting any value out of this, smash that like button. Do it. Do it now. I know you want to. All right. So let's do something else so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab some type here TYPE alright we love that and by the way I don't know if you knew this but if you just kind of move away from the type a little bit you can click and that will actually commit the type and then you can click again to create a new type layer you don't have to choose another tool anymore so we're gonna call this one more type once again click away and if you want to edit that type or any of it, just double click and you can. We'll call it my type. And now just click away. So I'm just doing this with one hand. Um, third type. Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize that that's, that's an option now. Yeah. So that's what the type tool selected. You could do that. Uh, let's make all of these bigger. So I'm going to select all three of those type layers. Notice that they're all selected. I just click, hold the shift key and click again. That selects multiple layers. I'm sure you knew that. But if you wanted to just see type layers and not everything else, there's a whole ton of stuff. Just here at the filter and layers, see that type? That will hide everything else and you could select them all that way. Turn it back on. So you don't have to go juggling around trying to find the type layers. But once you've got them selected and we see, hey, maybe we want to make them 100 pixels. Type in 100 and boom. All three of those will change. Yes, and that will work for font type. So you can do multiple layers at the same time. Let's do a black. Awesome. Let's change the color. White. So yeah, you can do multiple type layers at the same time. So hopefully that's useful. Now, control. I mean, I've got the move tool now. If I control click, I can select that. And if I double click, it will take me back to the type. But let me just control click once and I'm going to put these layers here. I want to show you something else. Okay, what if we want to make this 3D type and we want to apply some layer styles to it? So let's grab this 3D type layer and I want to apply layer styles. So why don't we just go to the effects and we're going to apply drop shadow. Drop shadow is beautiful. We love drop shadows. Let's bring in the layer style. And let me show you some interesting things. I'm actually going to take the opacity up, take the size down. Let's get a nice soft one. Let's bring the opacity down about 30-ish. Now, let's do something fun. Let's turn this into, uh, by the way, if you option scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. And you can use the space bar to move this around while the layer style dialog is open. 
Who knew that? All right, so we're going to do bevel emboss. I'm going to show you how to create a glossy type. Uh, so with the bevel emboss, what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the size. Pull the depth all the way up. And let's go here. Preview is off. Preview is on. There we go. Okay, stroke emboss is not going to work. We want a inner bevel. Ooh, see that? Bad. Make the size smaller when you see that. You never want that. Now, here's another tip. When you see these, see the contour, which is the thing actually giving you the bevel, it never looks good by default. But if you choose contour here and anti-alias, it's going to make it look better. But you can also change the shape of that. So let's do like something kind of, see how it's kind of curved in now? It makes it look a little bit more interesting. You could go that way. You see, there's all these different... Um, ways of embossing this a lot and you can create your own too uh so let's do it like you know let's do that one just for fun or chisely one yeah let's do that one and yeah you can you can create your own you just choose a new contour and uh well we'd, we would create it um load contours save contours replace contours contours this should be a whole bunch more there we go we choose a pen gives us more and yes you can create your own all right so what i want to do here is i just want to find one that looks eh, the curvy one yeah i don't know that one let's do that one and then you can go in and once again change it so we're going to hit our size let's get the size where it's just right and the other thing that's not looking incredibly great is the angle. And let's do the gloss contour as well. Gloss contour, if I had this little double ring, it's going to make it look more shiny. Now, a lot of people ask in blending options, what's the difference between opacity and fill opacity? Well, fill opacity just changes the pixels, but keeps the layer style there. Opacity is just the same opacity you're used to. So let's take the fill opacity, bring it all the way down. You could leave a little bit there, but why bother when I can go all the way down and now let's go to bevel and boss. Let's change the angle. And we can get this glossy type to look, you know, how nice and glossy like we want it. Looking good. Now you could put a little color if you wanted to put a little uh, color overlay in here. You give it a little tint. Let's change that to color blend mode. You know, you can tint it. I'm going to do blue because I like blue just looks more modern and more sexy and then we'll do the same thing for the drop shadow the drop shadow also makes an incredibly good glow if you set the distance to zero this increases the opacity and the size and changes to a bluish color see and drop the opacity down and we're just going to give it a little bit of a glow around the edge drop that size down and this is kind of a, it's a fun kind of way of working. Let's make it a little bit more there. There we go. All right. So all of that, just to tell you, if I wanted to copy this style to another one of these lines of type, I could hit the Alt or the Option key and just drag it in there. Now, what we're going to have to do is, of course, go into the fill opacity, bring it all the way down, boom same result now we could do that or there's another way to do this because if i changed it like say i went to the color overlay here and i decided i want to change this color overlay to more of a yellow or lime green if i want to copy it there i have to go like this right click copy layer styles choose the layer underneath and this is not bad and then paste layer style see it updates it now, here's another thing I could do. I could select all of these or and hit Control G, or I could just hit Control G, just create a group, right? So what I'm doing now is I'm creating a group, and I'm going to drag this 3D effect to the top, drop it on the group. If I hit the Alt or the Option, you know, it will replace it and keep it there, but if I just drag it, it literally will just move it. And now I've got it on all the groups. Um, let me just hide this. I've got a little bit crazy with this. All right, so now I've moved it to the groups. Let's just turn it off here. 
and you can apply this effect. Now, why are these hidden? Oh, I know why, fill opacity. Bring it all the way back. My type, let's go here. My type, let's go here. I'm just bringing it fill opacity all the way back again. And that one, more type. Here we go. Make sure your fill opacity is set to 100. Okay, and I'm gonna get rid of the style here, right click, and I'm just going to clear the layer style. All right, so now I've got three layers or four layers, let me get rid of that, we don't need the copy. All right, so we've got these layers, and now if we apply the effect to the layer styles here, now we've got it in the group and it's gonna to apply to everything. So now, if I take that fill, pull it down, so now I'm just applying it to the group, but every layer in here now is gonna take on this property. The nice thing about this, if I want to change something now, I go to color overlay, make it white, boom, boom, boom. Now it's just going to update everything at once. Let's do the color overlay. Let's change this to red, just so you can see. Now it updates all of that at once. But what's cool about that is if now if I decide I want to put something else in here, like, I don't know, let's do a star. So we're going to grab the polygon tool and go under here and if you bring this ratio down under 100 we'll get a star so i'm just going to drag out a star and look at that the star also has that glossy look so anything we put inside this group now is going to take on the layer style of that group and it's going to enable us to change all of those so all right so that was um a lot of stuff there guys yeah the replay will be live right after this how much ram do i have i have a lot of ram 144 gigs of ram so um yeah a lot but i'm also running three screens and streaming this at the same time so it does make things just a little bit bit um um what do you call it? a little more laggy so hopefully you guys are learning some good things if you are hit that like button if there's anything there that is of value you guys looks like you're still here so i guess i'm holding your attention with this fun and exciting stuff so there's a lot of stuff we can do um let me show you one other thing this is this is kind of a fun thing this i'm going to show you a trick with everybody's favorite smart objects let me show you something really fun and exciting with smart objects. Let's grab a shape here. We're going to use the custom shape tool. Go up here. Now, if you don't have all of these, make sure you go under there and append shapes. I'm not going to do a okay because it'll give me a duplicate of everything. Uh, legacy shapes, and this will give you all of these shapes. Lots and lots and lots and lots of shapes. All right. I think you got it there's lots of shapes okay so i'm not going to do this as a shape that i'm going to do it as a pixel on a new layer it's three options pixels shapes paths we could talk about that another time but i want to grab this airplane let's grab you know what let's grab the blimp the airship these are always fun to work with so with the blimp the airship let's make it you know what let's make it gray can't go wrong with gray shift key and this will constrain it and we drop in and now we have an airship nice that's exciting just what i always wanted for christmas an airship i mean who doesn't want an airship for christmas right so if i right click and i convert this to a smart object you guys know this but if i hold the alt or the option key i'm duplicating it now if i hit Control t or command t i can resize this all right and in alt option it's duplicating it again so we're making a few duplicates in fact why don't we select all of them hold down the alt or the option key i don't know if you knew that but you can duplicate multiple objects at once now the nice thing about working in a smart object is if i want to get access to the smart object i double click the smart object opens it as a new psb well this is thrilling and exciting because now I can apply let's apply a layer stuff just like we did let's do a uh, quick bevel and emboss we won't spend a lot of time on it oh there we go it looks nice and shiny 
Uh, let's give it a color. Let's just do a solid color overlay. Let's do a, uh, I don't know, let's do something nice so we can see it. Let's make it bright orange. All right, cool. And if I hit save and then close this, it's going to update all of them. Okay, that doesn't look very nice. That means that, okay, it doesn't look good. No problem. Double click a different one. You can double click any of them because all of these smart objects are linked to the same image. So when we duplicate a smart object, we're not duplicating the image, we're just duplicating the container. And if you want to know more about smart objects, check out my tutorial that I did. Uh, just Google it is uh, how to use potatoes to understand smart objects in Photoshop. And it's there on the YouTube channel. So let's change this. Let's make it look better. So let's take the bevel and emboss and uh, the technique is smooth. That's nice. I like that. Let's move this to more of a rounded kind of thing. Let's change the contour here. Something softer. Let's go, you know, something a little bit more, you know, softy, um, balloony, softy, balloony. Is that a word? Soft, soften. Do people say soften or soften? I say soften. Do you say soften or soften? Let me know in the comments. And we're going to drop a drop shadow under there just for grins and giggles because we're just going to do a regular drop shadow. Let's just quickly do that. There we go, a little drop shadow under there. And let's take the color away because I, I no longer like the color. So we're going to click OK, hit Control S. It's going to save it and we get a duplicate. Whoa, what happened? Um, there it is. Let's get rid of him because we don't need to look at that anymore. All right, so now we've changed them. And I can still move these around. Now I've got two more really cool tips for you that I haven't even got to the good tip yet, guys. So I can change the size of it. Notice though, sometimes when you're working with certain things and the smart objects, notice it's getting bigger now. And the reason is because it's getting bigger is you can't expand it on here at larger than the smart object container. So let's double click. Once again, we go in here, see it went, it, it, it got a little bit at the top. So let me crop this a little bit bigger. And that's just because of the bevel, because I changed the bevel and the drop shadow. See how it's cutting it off? Hit enter, save. And all right, that's fixed. Notice nothing's getting cut off again. So if you see that, that's what's happening. But another thing I wanted to show you guys with adjustment. See how it looks, it's too big here and it looks weird. So what you do is when you've got effects, if you right click, you have an option that says scale layer styles or scale effects. And this is something you guys should use all the time because it's too big. See how it looks weird? Take this scale and now we can just drop it down and look at this. Scale that until it looks nice. That doesn't look so three dimensional right now. Uh, it's more like a cutout, but that's fine. But see how it affects all of them. All right. Check this out. What if I want to have another one, but I want this one to be different than the rest. So I want to be able to edit it, but I want to keep it as a smart object. So if I choose one of these, a layer five copy one at the top and I right click and then I choose new smart object by a copy. Um, and there should be a new smart object there. I'm just going to call this one copy. Renaming it isn't doing anything, but also doing is allowing us to identify. I mean, I could right click on it and just make it red. Okay, so there's the one that we made the copy. Now, this is the one that was duplicated. There we go. We duplicated that, right? So if I double click here, we go into this smart object and I turn the color overlay back on and save it. And we go back to here. Notice only that one changed and not all of them. If I double click any of the other ones, it's going to change everything. But when you do it via copy, that means that you can change this one now. And that's going to stay independent from the rest. Now I could hold down Alt or Option and start spawning off copies of this. And if I change one of these copies, you might have to watch the replay on this. Um, just these copies. So this becomes a new family. So now we've created a new family of linked smart objects. Isn't that cool? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a little bit more advanced in smart objects than what we're used to looking at. But um, 
Yeah, you know what? I was going to do a fix my photo this week. So, you know what we'll do? We'll do a fix my photo next week. If you guys want me to work on any of your photos or your images, upload them to fixmyphoto.net. Make sure you upload the raw file if you have it. If not, JPEG or, you know, the best quality you have, the best size, so as I can edit it. If it's just a little tiny JPEG, I, I can't do much with it. Uh, make sure you put your name in the file name and also no more than three per week per person. So we'll, we'll look at a fix my photo next week. We're definitely going to do that. And uh, thank you, Bruce. Bruce gave you guys a link to that there. And there's another link that Bruce is going to give you right now. I didn't uh, prepare him, but I think he can find it. And as to our group in Facebook. So we have a Facebook group, guys. And this Facebook group, um, you can upload your pictures to us. It's a private group. I will accept you. Uh, just go into face group, uh, Facebook.com and just type in, you know, Photoshop Cafe. And, and you'll see the group. The group is Photoshop Cafe something. Let me find it for you right now. I'll just show you. Uh, so we just grab this. We go to Facebook. I'm just typing it in and we'll get it. Bruce just gave you the link there. Facebook groups. Um, that link there. And uh, let me just bring it up. And there is our group. This is our group here. And um, if you guys post in here your favorites. Oh, there's some cool ones. What I'm going to do is next week I'm going to pull out some nice composites or whatever you guys may be doing. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll call out a couple of these next week as well. So that's facebook.com groups. That's the number 5387833 blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to get the name Photoshop Cafe. So um, right now that's not going to get you there, but we're, we're working on that. Uh, pop that in and we'll show some of your stuff next week. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, see that little subscribe button, turn it on, and then you won't miss any tutorials from me, uh, whether it be Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, live streams, or every Tuesday morning is a shorter tutorial. Sometimes there's just a few minutes. Um, check all of those out at Photoshop Cafe on YouTube and subscribe. And if you haven't liked this yet, smash that like button. How are we doing for likes, guys? Have we passed 100 likes yet? Where are we? Yes, we did. We passed 100 likes. So, sword passed it a while ago. So, anyway, guys, thanks for joining us this week. Um, and um, we'll be back next week. So, see ya.